the lab, but not in the field. Okay? Uh, it's, it, they, when they do testing in the lab, they use a heat lamp to simulate the summer, but they heat it up over a long period of time, they slow it down, cool it off. Well, when you're dealing with uh, thunderstorms out here, you may have a 105 degree day and all of a sudden it dumps 50 degree water on your building. What happens? Everything shrinks up, right? Just, you can't simulate that in a lab. So I like to see products that have been out a while before I start advocating, yeah, use this. Because honestly, my reputation, Armco's reputation is on the line if we recommend the product and it does it before. Okay, we've got a little bit more to do. And the roofing, just making sure that your flashings are all installed. Uh, this particular job is going to have, that we use these uh, photographs because this is the type of roof that's going on in this building. But you can see how we come up and put a hidden turn bar here and actually wrap it. So that detail right there is, looks like this. This is your parapet. There's the turn bar. The roofing comes up behind it. It's wrapped. Goes up and over. Okay, so what have we done? How many times? Up, what do you mean up and under and then wrap? It well, goes right underneath. Up underneath your, so your if you were cap. to load that up, your roof is right here, the turn bar is right there, but before you put the turn bar on, you wrap it with membrane. That's another piece. Another piece of membrane. And then that membrane goes up. And that goes up. Over, over the parapet, under the metal How cap. How can you have to have the turn bar there? To hold up the base flashings of the roof to well, the wall. Why would I do that? You're just making more holes. Not necessarily. What you're doing is you're sealing all the fasteners off. Because this is where we usually find leaks because the counter flashing receiver is leaking. Okay, so what did we do? We just got rid of the counter flashing receiver and the counter flash. So there's no maintenance anymore. Okay, also, also roof warranties typically stop right here. Not one roof warranty I know typically goes more than 18 inches up. This particular roof has a warranty that if you do that, it goes up and over. So all of a sudden now your warranty includes that. Now we have been instrumental in getting some of the major manufacturers like John Fangle and GAF and Suprema, and they're now, we're detailing our roofs with their products on it, like this, and we're getting them to warranty that. Okay, so you understand why we do that? We're trying to help build the building from a maintenance standpoint, so our owners don't have to maintain them as much. Why can't you run that sheet continuous on it? You need a break between the base flashing and the wall, because the base flashing will want to have a tendency to stretch. The roof will pull. This whole roof is built as a diagrammatic uh, diaphragm. Okay, structural engineer designed that deck to be bolted or welded to the joist. Those joists move in a horizontal fashion, trying to keep the, the deck actually keeps the building from racking. That happens, that'll start pulling away on those base flashes. So you want them separate. Okay. Also, that allows you to come back and re-roof the building without ever having to get into the coping later on. Right? Well, but if you wrap it like that, you wouldn't be able to get to your receiver and you'd have to cut all that out. Well, what you do is, yeah, there's a way to do that. You cut it right, right at the turn bar and then you can redo all that. There's a way that you pull the membrane off and go up underneath it and you might as well have everything back to its original condition. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I promise. I'll never say trust me because that's when you lose you. <laughs> That's what a good, nice, clean roof should look like. Is that Yukon? It is. Mm -hmm. Is it? All those were. <laughs> all those were Yukon. Oh, were they? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I would point out when you have scuppers at a roof drain, uh, an existing, or new roof drain, existing roof drain, does everybody know the rule of thumb for locating overflow scuppers? Emergency overflows? We don't just use Texas. No. <laughs> okay. If you see someone trying to put a scupper in a wall that's four inches above that drain, so in that condition, here's your wall, here's your roof drain, and that scupper is sitting up here, and that's over two inches, you have a problem. Okay? The code says, and the way the building engineer designs the building is he he designs that structural load for dead load or live load, okay, um, to handle at least 20 psf. All right, that equates to four inch head of water over a certain amount of span on the building. So when that happens, the way the code reads is they want that scupper to be no more, as an industry standard, no more than two inches above the primary drain. 
so that at no particular time can that roof carry more than two inch pond water. So you don't over overwork the uh, life the load of the building. Okay? So if you see somebody coming in and putting those scuppers in too high like that, top oh, wave red, red flag. That can cause your roof to collapse. Okay? What's next? Uh, good workmanship on the sheet metal, making sure that they have the brackets in place. They didn't have this built up on the mock-ups, but I actually made them build one up in the corner, even though we had it up. They did have it on the mock-up, but I made them build me a little corner here on the top of the building because the building itself was out of square, and I wanted to see how they were going to address that and get the metal to look right. Okay. Yeah. That's not you, Conrad. No, that wasn't you. <laughs>
because you have a way of doing things as long as they meet the intent of what we're trying to accomplish, I'm all open for it. You know, the stuff, sometimes they'll have great ideas. And, I, and this morning we were talking to the Glazer. I learned something from him. And, you know, I'm going to try to stick it in my presentation for next time. So we're all learning this process, constantly trying to make a perfect building. I don't think we'll ever get there. I'd like to do that before I die. But, you know, I don't know if it'll happen. Because you can't build and draw a perfect building. It's just, what do you do with what you have? And get the subcontractors to buy into that idea and take them pride in their quality. That's where we've lost it. The tradesmen have no pride, really, in their quality, so to speak. So we've got to get that back out of them. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I do like that idea of doing a presentation out there in the field with the subs involved and doing it's annoying for us as mock-ups are if if you do them like you're talking about where you involve everybody and have a meeting and talk about them together you make sure the guys out there actually they're actually going to be doing it and understand exactly. what's in the details it's not just nodding their head and saying yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. no i can see it i got you know because you can stand up with plans with them but that doesn't mean that's that they really understand and that's what ends up in out there so like it's good to have whoever like if you're, whoever's going to be working on that roof whoever's going to be working on that windows those windows to be in that meeting and talk about exactly every detail that's going to go through that way everybody knows what they're doing they're not doing it like they did it on the last job <coughs> so. people do tend to forget that they're doing something a little bit better if it's inspected, not expected. Yeah. That's what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And getting them to understand, that's one key point, getting them to understand how the other trades around them work is another key point. Because they don't care. I don't care what the brick is doing. I just get my stuff and get out. That's how I make my money. Well, that's why we've lost the pride in our ownership of what we do. Getting my stuff to leave, so that's a problem. It is. You start getting some of it covered up and we don't find it. But it's just like comparing things on the inside of the building where you've got, you know, a frame or frames a wall and one or six a pipe in there and bows a frame out and you've got a hump in the wall and the guy comes and takes and beds the whole thing over the hump and then you've got the guy that comes and paints over the hump and you've got the guy that comes and puts a ceiling over the hump and the guy comes over the hump crown molding. I've actually seen this. They put crown molding over the hump and you finally get there and you're saying, how many people saw that hump and didn't stop? It like the most ridiculous thing they've ever seen. And then they want to get paid to redo it. Because it's because it was the pipe fitter's problem. I'll go you one better. Well, why, why, why 